Welcome, 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 Life Altar family. It is Thursday night. Uh, glad to have everyone joining us. Um, good to see you guys. Come on in. Let me know where you're joining from. I see my family joining on Facebook already. Awesome. Man of God, Andre, good to see you, man. God bless you guys. Come in, come in, come in. Do me a favor. As you're coming in, share the live with somebody uh, that you believe it to be a blessing to. Uh, let me know where you're joining from. I see my Florida family coming in already. God bless you guys. Some exciting announcements tonight. Um, and uh, we are excited about what God is doing. Amen. Uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, we welcome you. 
If you're watching on the replay, um, we welcome you. Again, this is Life Altered. On Thursday nights, we tend to go very deep into the Word. We love the presence of God, the Word of God, and tonight we're anticipating God speaking to us in a new and a fresh way. So come on in. We're glad to see you guys. I see YouTube joining. God bless you all. Watching from Brazil, my sister, love you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Powerful woman of God. Amen. We are wrapping up our Issachar uh, series tonight. Uh, it's been powerful. I'm excited to see what God does um, tonight as we go in. I'm going to pray here in a moment. I'll go through some announcements, and then we're going to dive into the Word. All right? Um, let's get started. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this day. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you would have your way speak into our spirits as only you can. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the fire that you release upon this broadcast. I thank you even now that your people will begin encountering your presence. I pray in the name of Jesus that not one word that I utter would be displeasing to you, but I pray that what you would say, uh, what I would say tonight would be what you would say if you were sitting here. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, let the spirit of revelation come in Jesus' mighty name. Let understanding come and let us be changed and transformed into your very image. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. God is so good. So tonight, uh, a couple of announcements I want to give uh, really quickly. Um, a couple things I want to share. Um, first of all, if you guys did not see this, let me make sure I share this really quickly. If you guys did not see this, um, sorry, one second. That should not be opening. Um. If you guys did not see this, my wife is going to be joining us, um, not next week because of Thanksgiving, but the following week she will be on uh, for our Freedom Night. Uh, it's going to be a powerful time. She's going to be sharing her her testimony, um, and we'll we'll go into this. I'm I'm super excited about this. It's going to be powerful. Jimmy Apostle, love you, bro. Good to see you, man. Um, and so excited about what God is going to do. This is going to be powerful. God is doing something supernatural in her life, and it is uh, life-changing, life-altering to see. I'm so excited about what God's doing in my wife's life um, and what is she's going to be able to pour out and share from her journey and also what God has done. So excited about that. You guys do not miss this. It is not going to be next week again. It's the Thursday uh, following, so it's not going to be a normal night. We'll be diving into um, her testimony, but it is going to be powerful. Um, and I, I'm so looking forward to people getting set free and what God is going to do. Amen. Um, secondly, really quickly, I want to make this announcement also. So for the foreseeable future, uh, we're, we're going to be moving away from weekly uh, lives to biweekly. So we'll be on every other week. Um, I'm doing this in response to some other things the Lord is, is uh, leading us to do, part of which is um, I need to complete these books. There's two books that the Lord gave me that I have to complete. I really need to, to wrap up. Um, and I want to get them wrapped up this year. So um, I'm going to really start pouring time into that. But in addition to that, there's some other things um, around discipleship. This is really a building season for us. Um, and so you will not be neglected. Listen, if you want as much content as you can get, join the community. I'm going to start doing more pop-up lives in there. Um, so you'll see some additional frequency in our Life Alter community. If you're not a part of that, uh, just go to our page on Facebook um, and join our community. I'll share the, uh, the community link again. But by all means, join. Um, we've done. I'm actually going to have some some guests start coming in and ministering in there again, um, and uh, and things of that nature. So excited about what God is doing there. Amen. Awesome, man. I, I'm so looking forward to these books. There's two books the Lord gave me. One of them is called. Um, Orphan No More. Um, it's it's reestablishing sonship in the body of Christ and dealing with this orphan spirit and the mindset that accompanies it. And then the last book is, is called, or excuse me, the second book is called uh, Pathways of Power. It is going to be life changing. It is a discipleship manual into new levels of um, demonstrating the power of God. God is raising up a generation that's going to move in miracle signs and wonders again, not like even what we've seen before, but to a greater extent. And I am so excited about what God is doing. Um, and I, I feel this intense push um, to begin sharing some of the things that the Lord's begin sharing with me. Um, and we're going to walk into it in, together. Amen. All right, let's, let's dive. Um, yes, we already prayed. So tonight, we're we'll continuing our discussion on the Issachar anointing. This anointing is an end time technology. It is a, a revelatory technology. We spent a lot of time last week talking about uh, the fact that the Issachar anointing is an anointing that allows you to see 
in the times you're living in and to be able to utilize what you see uh, by, by, by revelation to partner with, with wisdom to be effective in the times we're living in. God is not raising up a generation of, of people who are just uh, fattened with revelation and fattened with scripture. He wants us to be effective. The, the command that Jesus left for us was to occupy until he comes. And so we are going after God. We're, we're, we're going to raise up a generation of people who are passionately pursuing God, excuse me, and passionately pursuing the demonstration of his kingdom. And so we talked about that. Um, and so tonight, I really want to dive into the Issachar anointing as it pertains to realms of light. Understand that the Issachar anointing, because it's revelatory, it taps into a dimension the Bible calls light. Um, there is a, there's some passages of scripture I went over, and I may, I may circle back to them, actually, because I want to make sure we get this. But in John chapter 11, uh, shortly after, uh, after Lazarus has gotten sick, Jesus waits two days. He abides there two days. His disciples don't want to go back to Judea because they are concerned that they're going to be killed. Um, and Jesus says um, that he needs to go now, uh, go, go back to, to, to excuse me, Judea. And so as he goes there, um, as he begins to go there, they're concerned. And Jesus says, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walks in the day, he does not stumble because he has the light in him. He has the light of life, right? And he says, but if he stumbles in the darkness, it's because he does not have light in him. And Jesus is talking about a scenario where a man has physically died. But in Jesus's mind, in the mind of Jesus and in the mind of God, Lazarus is only sleep. This is a very important distinction because this tells us, according to the Bible, the Bible says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So the level that we think on... Uh, when we are carnal, is below the level God is thinking on. It means that he sees differently than we do. And so we have to come into his realm. That's what Jesus is exactly what he was saying. He was saying when you're in the light, there are things you don't stumble over. You don't stumble over sickness when you live in, in, in the light. There's a realm of revelation that, re that recognizes that you have dominion over sickness. Even when we look at the dominion mandate, I want you to understand something. The Bible said you have dominion over all of the earth. That means that every level of kingdom in the earth you have dominion over. This means the molecular kingdom you also have dominion over. This means that when there's microorganisms that are in the air, when there are uh, pathogens that are in their air, there are viruses that are in the air, they still come under your dominion because not only do you have dominion over sickness and disease, but you also have dominion over manufactured things that are in the world. This is important for us to understand. We're going into a critical time. If you're not paying attention right now, the world is shifting at a rapid pace. Take your eyes off of CNN. Take your eyes off of MSNBC. Take your eyes off of Fox News and look and see what is happening in the world. We're rapidly approaching the conclusion of this age. And so because of that, God is doing two things. One, he is raising up his church to the level that it was when he established it. Secondly, he's preparing us to, uh, uh, to rapidly evangelize the world so we can get as many souls as we can before uh, it's time to go. So we are not the church that's waiting on a, a, a rapid exit strategy. We're waiting on, on God to pour out his spirit upon all flesh so that we can exercise his dominion upon the earth. Amen. All right, so let's dive. I want to go to, to um, let's go to uh, Psalms 36. I'm going to take you to Psalms 36. I'll share this on the screen so you can see it. I always love to make sure you guys see what we're saying in the word of God. Uh, Psalms 36 uh, verse 9 is a very powerful scripture. I love this verse. Um, and it simply says this, Psalms 36, 9. Somebody type that in the chat for me so we have it. Psalms 36, 9. I'm reading out of the New King James translation, and it says this, For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Now, I want you to understand something. Two things. One, in Scripture, we see a connection between light and life. I just showed you in John uh, chapter 11, Jesus said that they have the light of life with them. John chapter 1, speaking of Jesus, says, In him was light, and his light was the light of men. Excuse me, in him was life, excuse me, and his life was the light of men. So there's a d distinction and a connection with life and light, okay? So here we see G the Bible says, for, you, for with you is the fountain of life. 
in your light we see light. In other words, there is a the fountain being the 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 uh, the source, the the origin. It's in you. the The source of life is in you. And then it goes on to explain where it is and how we locate it. It says, in your light, we see light. So there are some things that require you to be in a realm of light in order to see them. Hear what, hear what I'm trying to explain to us. So light in and of itself is multiple things in scripture. Light is a realm, light is a revelation, and light is a release. Uh, light is a realm. It's a, it's a place, the Bible, uh, I'm not going to go there yet, but the Bible dis- distinctly talks about us being delivered from the power or the domain of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son or into the kingdom of light. We're delivered out of darkness into his marvelous light, the Bible says. So light is a realm, just like darkness is a realm in scripture. And I can show you this in many different places where where the angels that fell were bound to a, a realm called darkness. But this also means that light is a realm. It's a realm that those that fell, the angels that fell, wanted to get back to but could not, okay? So light is a realm that we need, that that God desires for us to live in. Now, let me say this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When you get saved and the kingdom of God, the, the spirit of God begins to live on the inside of you, understand this. The spirit of God fills your spirit. Your spirit comes alive. Now the kingdom is on the inside of you. You receive the Holy Ghost. The kingdom comes on the inside of you. Watch this. But you don't live in light until your mind enters where your spirit is. You don't live in light until your mind enters the realm that your spirit is. In other words, this is why the Bible tells us that we need to uh, be transformed by the renewing of our minds. It tells us to be renewed in the spirit of our minds. Our minds now have to be uh, acclimated to a realm called light other way in other words if, if you don't go through this process of mind renewal through revelation what will happen is your spirit is saved but your life will not look anything like what it what it should in a realm called light so it's like coming into a kingdom and living at the door staring back into your old life You come in through the gates of the kingdom, but the entire life that you're living in the kingdom, you're staring back into your old life. It's not until we turn and embrace the kingdom in our minds that we begin to enter and and experience the fullness of that kingdom. So excuse me, light is a realm. Light is also revelation. The Bible says that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So because of your light, I can see where I'm going. Because of your light, the Bible also says the entrance of your word brings light. It gives understanding to the fool. So because light has entered, revelation has come. What I was a fool in before, what was foolishness to me, I now understand. We understand this is spiritual because the Bible says that the carnal mind cannot understand the things of the spirit, their foolishness to him. So what is he talking about? He's talking about a mind that is still in darkness. So the Issachar anointing is an anointing that exists and walks and lives in a realm called light. It it so lives in this realm that when the news says one thing, Issachar sees another. Watch this. So I was talking about this on Sunday at our church. So you were born in this realm. When you were born, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 that God framed the worlds, worlds, plural, by the word of God, right? So God framed two worlds, the spirit world and the natural world. Now, when you were born, you were born designed to walk in both worlds. This is why uh, in, 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 the, in the beginning, Adam could access the tree and the rest of the garden. The tree of life was located in heaven, but he could access it through, through because he had access to both realms. The Bible also tells us that the, uh, we, we would see men that would go up into the heavens. They didn't know if they were in their body or without, Paul said. Uh, there, there were men who would travel in the spirit in the Old Testament. How, so, there, so there were realms, focus camera, there were realms that they were accessing via revelation in the Old Testament. Okay, so... It, it, it is a, it's, a, it's a realm and it's a revelation. It's important for us to understand that God has programmed us to walk in both worlds. Stay with me. So when you're born, you are born into this natural world, but designed 
to be to walk in the spirit as well. So you were given two sets of senses. Your natural set of senses are designed to interact with this world. Watch this. They're designed to interact with this world to collect evidence, to create information in your mind of how to interact with this world. So when you were born, nobody had to teach you how to smell. It was natural to you. When you were born, nobody had to teach you how to see. Your eyes were programmed to see. When you were born, nobody had to teach you how to feel. You could feel uh, from, from the very onset of your life. These uh, your hearing uh, was, was, was natural to you. You could hear your mother's voice when you were born. These were naturally built inside of you. These are technologies designed to allow you to interact in this realm. But these were not the only technologies you were given. In your spirit, part of your wiring is to interact with the spirit world. That's why some of you weren't even saved, but you saw demons. There were some of you who weren't even saved, but you saw angels. You saw things in the spirit realm. You weren't even filled with the Holy Ghost. But because of the technologies on the inside of you, your eyes were already open to another realm. There are some of you, you smelled things in the spirit. There were some of you, you heard voices and you did not know where they were coming from because you were already programmed. You sensed by feeling. You felt things in the spirit. You could feel when something was not right or someone around you was, was not good for you because you already had these senses in the spirit realm. So you were already designed to interact with these worlds. So when you come into realms of light, you perceive differently than the natural world. The natural world, they're not paying attention to the other senses. Many of those senses are dead in them. The unsaved world, many of those, those senses are dead in them, but you, because you're alive to the spirit of God, you're able to discern that even some of the things you hear on the news are not the truth. Some of the things you hear from people are not the truth. Some of the things that are, are going on in the world are more spiritual than they are natural. Do you know there are spiritual storms and there are natural storms? There are natural attacks on your body and there are spiritual attacks on your body. So, this is important for us to understand. When we are called to be the light in this era that we live in, we have to be able to use senses that are not native to this world. And that's what the Issachar anointing does. It, it could look in a time when everybody is saying, don't do this, don't say this, don't buy this. The Issachar anointing says, but I discern by the Spirit. This is where God is leading me. So everybody's telling you don't buy property, but in your spirit, God is leading you to prepare to buy land. Mm. The, you know what's interesting? I watched, I paid attention to the crypto world. I should have paid closer attention. Follow my spirit, man, but I'm learning. It's interesting to me that while people were saying don't buy crypto, billionaires, Government leaders were buying crypto. It's interesting that this is what was happening in the world. They were telling us not to. <laughs> so understand that these, th this, this, this realm that you're called into, you have to begin to train your senses to discern this realm. We live in a realm called light. Um, there's a couple things I want to give you, but there's, let, me, let me say this. So light is a realm, but it's also revelation. Revelation is so critical to your walk, you have no idea. This is one of the reasons why the, the church has been robbed of power, because the enemy is okay with us having 36 praise breaks, but he's not okay with you getting a revelation of scripture that allows you to unlock dimensions and pull them into this realm. So for example, the enemy... It has, has convinced the church that it's okay for us to have a confession of faith and still be dead broke. And so poverty seems to be overwhelming the church of Jesus Christ. Why is that? Because the enemy wants to limit us in, in, our, in our ascent into the things of God by blindness. My sister Angela, love you. Good to see you. So he wants to limit us. So he does this. Watch this. You have passion to do the, the will of God. You have ideas to do the will of God. You have uh, creativity to do the will of God, but you don't have the resources because that realm has to be unlocked by the revelation that opens it. 
So if you don't have a revelation into kingdom finance, you can be gifted, anointed, called. You can have a passion for God, love for God. You can have an incredible prayer life and still never tap into the release of heaven that authorizes you for finances. It's very important for us to get. So revelation changes how we interact with God's world. It allows us to tap into things that our natural senses cannot sense, cannot detect. It'll keep us in places where we begin to move in in directions that the world is not moving in. So the world is telling us to do this, but God is saying do this, and he's moving us ahead of time. And it looks counterproductive and counterintuitive to what the world is doing because revelation is not limited by time. It comes from eternity. Okay? So God may tell you to sow a seed. Everybody else is telling you to save up, but God is trying to break that spirit of poverty off of your life. God may tell you to begin building something that everybody else is saying don't do, but he knows what's coming. If I don't get a revelation of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, I can allow myself to be subjected to the same sickness and disease that the world is. But when I get a revelation, huh, let, me, let me show you how powerful revelation is. I was in my prayer closet the other day crying out to God for, for encounters with him. I want to I want to encounter his word. I want to encounter the angelic. I want to see God show up in my in my prayer closet. I want to experience all these things. And the Spirit of God spoke to me. He took me to the book of Isaiah, chapter six, during an encounter that Isaiah had. Right? And the Bible says that a seraphim, ah, a seraphim began to cry out, holy, holy, holy. And this seraphim was so powerful that the foundation of the temple shook when he spoke. And the Lord said, look up seraphim. And as I began to look up the, 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 uh, un, the, the, the Hebrew definition of seraphim, it is a flaming or a burning serpent with wings. So there's a race in the angelic that are serpents that are burning serpents and they have wings. Now, I want you to get this revelation. The spirit of God spoke to me. He said, if I did not show you this and this a seraphim showed up in your prayer closet with you, you would assume it's demonic or satanic. You would assume because of your lack of revelation that what is actually coming from me is coming from the kingdom of darkness. Revelation allows you to to understand and to interact with God's world properly. If we don't understand it, we reject it. This is what's happening in the church while we reject deliverance, while we reject people praying in tongues on the mic, while we reject women preaching. We have it's a it's a it's a deficit of revelation. And so God wants us to come into this place where we're no no longer limited. Listen to me. I honor what God has done in the past, but we don't need to be limited by what our fathers were limited by. We don't need to be limited by what our our uh, pre-existing conditions in our family and our predecessors were limited by. God wants to take us into a realm where we begin to understand his world to the degree that we have command of things in heaven. Hear what I'm saying. Uh, don't, don't hear this as blasphemous. He wants us to have command of revelation and command of realities in the spirit realm. This is why he said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. And what is, whatsoever you bind on earth, let it also already be what's bound in heaven. I want you to pull down heaven realities into this world. Let me keep going because I, I feel myself getting stuck. So, so the, this reality is so important. Revelation allows you to to unlock the Issachar anointing on your life. So watch this. Jesus is talking. He's telling a parable about the sower. And he's talking about uh, these different ground conditions. Now understand, Jesus is using, this is a parable that's actually describing four heart conditions. So there's uh, there's this stony ground, there's thorny ground, there's ground that's like a, a trampled uh, pathway, and then there's good ground. Right. Two of the grounds completely reject the seed. One of the grounds received the seed, but it's choked out by thorns or the affairs of this life. I want you to understand he's telling us that there's a condition of the heart that rejects revelation. This condition keeps revelation from sinking down into the heart and that keeps it from producing fruit in our lives. But there is a condition that's called good ground. That ground receives the seed and it begins to produce fruit. So now you understand why the church doesn't look like the book of Acts. 
because the seed is falling, but it's going into hard hearts. The seed is falling, but it's being choked out by the affairs of this life. Or the seed is not being spread because we're teaching things that are not revelation. This means that there are, there are realities, watch this, there are realities that they walked in in the Old Testament, in, a, in the Old Covenant, in the original covenant. That wasn't even the greater covenant, wasn't even the latter covenant. They were peering into things that we are now, we now have access to. And yet, the dimensions that they walked in in the old covenant seem to be greater than what we see in our church today. Why is that? Because there are realities that they had that we lost. There are realities that, we, that they had that, that we lost Because those things, the Bible calls apostles stewards of mysteries. That's not just a good title. That means that they are people who God reveals a mystery to, and they are guardians of it. They are porters of it. They have access to bring other people into that dimension. They have access to teach it to other people and to steward it in a way that it, that it maintains its integrity. It maintains its power. It maintains its effectiveness so that when it's passed to the next generation, they don't lose a dimension. They don't lose uh, its, its influence, and they don't lose its effectiveness. And so somewhere along the line, there were things that we lost. Watch this. Understand this. He's talking about the word as a seed because the kingdom of God comes as a seed. You have to get this. Even Jesus, the Bible says, unless a seed, a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Talking about Jesus. Jesus came to the, into the earth as a baby, not a, not a man. He came as a seed. The kingdom of God comes into you as a seed. So when God wants to give you wealth, he does not drop money into your bank account. He gives you a seed. He gives you a seed of revelation. He gives you an understanding of his world. He tells you to sow as a mechanism for beginning to till the ground of your mind and till the ground of your heart so that you can now begin to bear fruit that leads to a harvest of wealth. You already have the gifts on the inside of you, but he's now got to give you a seed of revelation. It comes as a seed. Watch this. The power to raise the dead comes as a seed. The same power that heals the sick, that heals the, 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 the headache, is the same power that, heals, that raises the dead. It's in seed form. There are some of us that God wants to give so much to, but he, if he gave it to us in, in its harvest, it would overwhelm us. It would break us. So God says, I got to give it to you in pieces. I got to give it to you and I need, watch this. I'm going to plant it on the inside of you and I'm going to let it grow as you grow. So as you grow in revelation, that revelation will grow inside of you. As you grow in maturity, that, that gift will grow inside of you. As you grow in maturity, that dimension will grow inside of you. The Issachar anointing is not an anointing that just sees and knows. It is a mature anointing. It's, it's an anointing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a realm where, where the people of God begin to see what God is doing, see what God is saying, seek God for wisdom on how to implement what he's saying. Look at this camera acting up. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> So, so, so God gives us many times what he wants to do in us in seed form. Despise not your small beginning. I feel the Holy Ghost talking. There are some things, some of you, you're even getting ready to get started. <laughs> and, and, and God is building something on the inside of you. And you're concerned about it starting out small. But you don't understand, this is how the kingdom operates. The kingdom is inside of you in its fullness, but it manifests in seed form. You say, well, I don't know how to prophesy, but God gave you one word. If you would move with that one word, the gift of prophecy would unlock on your life. There are many times when I prophesied even on this broadcast and I didn't have anything but one picture, a small picture. And as I began to speak, God begins to fill my mouth. So these are things God wants to do on the inside of us. Let's go really quickly to 1 John 1. I am... I can't believe that we've been going for 30 minutes. My God. First John 1, let me show you this really quickly. This passage, 
Absolutely. I, uh, I love it. Watch this. First uh, John um, chapter 1, uh, verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So watch this. I want you to understand what he's saying here. He's saying that in order for you to live in light, in order for you to, to walk with God, you have to walk where he's walking. You have to come into a level of agreement. I was teaching on Sunday. The Bible says this in Hebrews 11, I think about verse 6. It says, um, for without faith, it's impossible to please God. That word please in its origin actually means to fully agree with. So this is not just talking about giving God pleasure. This is talking about coming into alignment with him. So revelation, watch this. When you get revelation, it is God's mind entering yours. It is the mind of God overwhelming your mind, correcting and, and, um, and recalibrating your mind to the degree that you see now the way he sees. You think the way he thinks. You believe the way he believes. That's, that's why the Bible talks about us having uh, the God kind of faith. He wants us to have the type of faith that aligns with him. So we have to come out of darkness, the Bible says, verse, uh, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us. Wait a minute. So the plate, watch this. The place of cleansing is the place of light. You, you don't come out of that, uh, that addiction until you come into light. You don't come out of that cycle. I feel the Holy Ghost until you come into light. You don't come out of that repetition. You don't, it, it takes a, a love. Even deliverance is light entering. So he says, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from sin. Watch this verse eight. If we say, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, watch this. Remember, I told you uh, uh, two weeks ago that Jesus talks and he says, he says, if the light that is in you is actually darkness, how deep is that darkness? This is exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about a place where you don't even have awareness of where you really are. You, you, don't, you don't even have awareness of what's actually on the inside of you or where you are in the spirit realm. So here you are and you think that the way that you're living, God is okay with. You think, watch this, your, your, your pastor, your man of God, your woman of God is trying to speak into your life. And because you think you already know, you can't even receive the seed that's going to produce a harvest in your future because you think you already know. You say, I don't have any sin. I'm good. God is trying to deal with the pride on the inside of you. Oh, I'm not in pride. God is telling you to forgive. I'm not in unforgiveness. And then he says, you're deceiving yourself. Matter of fact, watch this. Let's, let's look really quickly in John chapter 9. Let me show you this. John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Um, let, let me give you the backdrop to this because I don't want to take all, all this time reading this. Uh, Jesus heals the eyes of a blind man. Uh, the blind man goes and sees the priest. The priest um, and the, uh, the, the religious leaders are now, um, they're frustrated. They're frustrated because this man has been healed and they weren't the ones who healed him. And the problem with this is, is that the moment healing begins moving, the religious circle loses their power. The moment a move of God begins, religion loses its hold. So they're concerned. So they say, well, well, who, who healed you? They went and talked to his parents. The parents said, ask him. The man begins to tell them, I don't know who he is, but he healed me and he's from God. They said, this man can't be from God. The guy said, this, this, isn't this a marvelous thing that, that I, look, watch this. I've been in the temple. I've been around you all this time. None of you can help me. I encountered this man one time, my eyes open, and you don't know if he's from God. Watch this. Verse 35. I love this passage of scripture. The Bible says in verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. They excommunicated this man from the temple. He was no longer welcome there. Not because he did something wrong 
but because his testimony was an indictment against the spirit of religion. Watch this. And, and the Bible says, Jesus, and when he had found him. Uh, see, Jesus goes looking for those that, the, reje- that, that the, the religious church rejected. Jesus goes looking for the ones that were outcast. Jesus goes looking. He's seeking after those that, that others mishandled in the body of Christ. Not because uh, it's all about uh, uh, fi- fixing your hurt and your pain. He's going after the ones that were misunderstood because of what they carried, because of what they encountered. Watch this. And the Bible says to him, uh, Jesus says to him, do you believe in the son of God? He answered, who is he, Lord, that I might believe in him? And Jesus answered, said, you have both seen him and it is he who was talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him because the only natural response to an encounter with Jesus is worship. Verse 39. And Jesus said, for judge, watch this, for judgment, I have come into this world that those who do not see may see and that those who see may be made blind. I want, let me read this really quickly out of the, um, the passion translation. No, no, I'm sorry. The, uh, the, I'll read it out of the Amplified and then I'm going to read it out of the, um, the, the new living. Cause I want you to see this. Uh, this is verse 39. Watch this. Verse 39 says this in the, in the Amplified Bible. It says, then Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment as a separator in order that there may be separation between those who believe on me and those who reject me. I'm telling you, we are coming into a time where Jesus is drawing a line in the sand. There is a separation coming even in the church between those who actually believe him and those that don't. Between those who actually receive him and those have reject- those who have rejected him. Between those who are actually working with him and for him and those who are working against him. There is a separation that is coming. And the Bible says he come, watch this, to make the sightless see and to make those who, who see become blind. I want to read this uh, again out of the New Living Translation. It says this. It says, Then Jesus told them, I entered this world to render judgment, to give sight to those, excuse me, to give sight to the blind, and to show those who think that they see that they're actually blind. So Jesus is talking. And he's saying, we have an issue here that I'm trying to address because there are people who think they see and because they think they see, they're blind. And there are people who know they're blind and those are the people I'm going to give sight to. It, it, listen to me. It is, your, it is your honest admission of the fact that you cannot see that allows him to give you sight. <laughs> it, it, is, it is your honest admission that you need revelation that allows him to unlock your mind. It is your honest admission that you don't know that allows him to allow you to know. It's, it's because, watch this, it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but it requires the humility of saying, God, I don't know what I'm doing. Do you know, let, let me say this, do you know the people, that I've, I've encountered many men and women of God, do you know the people that I see that are shaking uh, the lives of people that are shaking territories, that are shaking, it is the people not that actually have no revelation, it's people that in their posture before God is, God, I don't know anything. If you teach me, help me to understand, open the ancient past of me, begin to show me revelation in areas that I'm blind. It's that posture that allows them to begin to, to gain insight into the realm of God. It is the prideful posture that says to God, you cannot handle revelation. You, watch this. You can't handle revelation when you can't handle submission. This is a principle of the kingdom. You'll never get authority until you're under authority. This is one of the reasons why discipleship is so important, because there's so many of us that are walking around in the body of Christ as vagabonds, and we're walking around as as, uh, isolationists, and we think that God is going to pour the fullness of his kingdom on one person, and you're going to take it to the world. When the Bible says the body fits jointly together, do you realize that the fivefold ministry is each uh, each of them is only has a piece and a measure of the fullness of Christ? Nobody has it all. And one of the reasons why God is raising up hybrids is because there are so many people in the body of Christ today who have rejected the fivefold ministry. So God says, I don't have time to raise up uh, people who only operate in one or the other because I need all of my body moving. So he's raising up a remnant of people that are hybrids. 
They're prophets and apostles. They're pastors and evangelists. Uh, they're, 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 they're teachers and, they're, and, they're, and they're those who are going out into the world. They're concerned about the body and they're concerned about the world. They're miracle workers and they're grounded in truth. This is what God is doing because he needs a people who can see and see what he's doing, see what the enemy is doing, and respond accordingly as the kingdom. God is not looking for a church to be accepted. He's looking for a church to occupy. We were never called to be accepted. We're called to influence. Let's keep going. Uh, so, so the Bible says this. Let's go down. I'm going to drop down to verse, um, verse 40. And it just anchors what we just said. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and they said to him, are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. It is because of your blindness. It is because of your arrogance and your pride that you are locked in a place called darkness. It takes humility to enter the kingdom of light. It takes humility even when you got saved. The Bible says if, uh, in, in uh, Romans 10 and 9, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, Lord, that means you humbled yourself under his lordship. And we believe with our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. So now you believe something you never saw. It takes humility to even enter into the kingdom of God. And that's how this anointing functions. So a couple of things, and then we'll, we'll wrap up because I don't want to keep you guys too long. So understand this. The, the people that Jesus is talking to, what he's telling us is that their blindness is their commitment to darkness. It's because they're committed to their position that they stay blind. The greatest thing, listen to me, I, I, I went live in our community uh, yesterday and um, I shared a couple of things and I'm going to share them briefly really quickly here. There are four things I shared that allow you to begin to accelerate in the kingdom of God. Um, many of these seem basic to the people of God because we don't understand that these are ancient mechanisms for your acceleration. One of them is prayer. Um, if you neglect the place of prayer, you will not grow, period. Prayer is the is the is the is the. Um, the spiritual connection between heaven and earth is what allows us to access the world of God. If you neglect this place of prayer, you are limited to the resources you have in this world. The next one is the word of God. The word of God is what, the, what framed the worlds. If you neglect the word of God and the revelation of the word of God, there are laws that are imposed on you that you cannot uh, operate under uh, correctly. There are laws that are governing the world that you don't know how to partner with. If we neglect the word of God, there are things about the character of God, the mind of God, the will of God, the ways of God that we miss. And so if we neglect that, we're left with religion. Okay. The third thing uh, that I gave was discipleship. This is one of the things that I think the body of Christ, uh, I was telling my wife the other night, I think the body of Christ has a... Uh, a framework for the for the language of discipleship, but we don't understand what it is. In many ways, we've lost the art of discipleship. Discipleship is more than just you having a prayer partner. Discipleship is more than just somebody making sure you come to church on Sunday. Discipleship was designed as a as a slingshot for the for the generation behind us. Discipleship was designed so that the, the generation in front of you could reach back and grab you, pull you, and launch you ahead into the next thing that took them years to obtain. Discipleship was designed to bring you into the level that the, that the teacher is. And the goal is that the teacher continues to grow and you continue to grow. So this is why Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. These are pathways that allow us to step into divine acceleration. This is how light works. It's passed. It's taught. It's released. Okay? Um, and this is, this is one of the reasons why it's so important for us to begin to examine what we've always known. Hear what I'm saying? I'm not telling you to, ne to neglect and to throw away everything you learn in church. That would be foolish. But what I'm telling you is, Revelation is progressive. So there are things that we learned that we can now come into greater understanding of. 
There are some, listen to me, there are people that are watching this broadcast, or maybe you know people, that still don't believe women can wear makeup in church because it's unholy. That if a woman wears uh, pants, that she's in sin. This is a, an issue of revelation. You looked at a scripture and you took it on the surface. And even if you took it on the surface, the, the, the apparel that men wore in the Bible is more akin to, to dresses today than it is to pants. But let, let's keep going, okay? Um, so we have, we, we, have, we have to have a generation that does not uh, negate discipleship because we think we already know. I, I, wanna, I want to, I want, man, I've learned so much about prayer in the last year. And I want to, I, I did a prayer, a teaching on prayer uh, a few months ago. I want to dive in all over again. But the problem is most people don't have an appetite for teachings on prayer. Because we think we already know. But it's progressive. There are things you begin to come into as God begins to disciple you, as you begin to learn from those who are discipling you, and you begin to come into greater levels of revelation, levels that begin to bring you into encounters with God, levels that begin to give you command of things in the earth. There are things that, uh, listen to me, the body of Christ is experiencing far more sickness than we should be, and it's because there are things in prayer that we've lost. There are things in revelation that we've lost. Amen? Um, the sad thing is that the church oftentimes demonizes these, these realms because we're more confident in, the, in, the, in demonic power than we are in the power of God. And so God wants to raise the standard of us. The Issachar generation is a generation that must see and must hear. We must hear and we must know. We cannot be blind leading blind. Amen. You know why this camera is doing this. <laughs> so again, when we come into these these realms of revelation, either through discipleship, um, through teaching, through experiences with God, that was the other thing. The, the, the last thing was encounters. Encounters give credence and evidence to the teaching that you have, but you have to have a foundation of teaching. Otherwise, encounters can be demonic and you'll never know. There are whole movements of cults and false religions in the world that were begun and born of false encounters. Okay? Um, so this is important. Revelation teaches us how to properly handle the things of God. I'm telling you, we're coming into a time now where it is more critical for you to have revelation of Scripture than it ever has been before. It's more critical now. What is this camera doing? Help, Lord. It's more critical now than ever before for us to have revelation, but it's also more critical for us to have discipleship. There should be somebody over you pouring into you. There should be somebody that's further ahead of you pouring into you. There should be somebody who is looking and saying, hey, you need to make these adjustments. If you don't, this is going to slow you down. How do we discern the hour that we're in? We need fathers and mothers in the body of Christ again. We need people who are submitted to voices. Listen to me. Let me, let me say this. I, I feel this by the Spirit of God. Some of us think that, okay, some of us think that, that when we come under, listen to me. We think that when we come under someone, everything they do, we're going to agree with. You think that when God gives you a man or woman of God, everything they do, you're going to be happy about. Every way they lead, they're not perfect, they're people. But God will even use their imperfections to sharpen you, to develop you. God will even use their shortcomings to, to, to guide you into, into maturity. God will do so. His goal is is to bring us into greater levels of maturity. And sometimes that comes from iron sharpening iron. What does that mean? Friction. I feel this by the Spirit of God. Because watch this. There are some of you God is going to lead into leadership. And if you don't, listen to me, if you don't resolve this issue 
of, of, of discipleship, submission to discipleship, and the frustration of what you consider with leadership, you will go into leadership and be broken by the people who repeat the pattern against you. There is no person that is going to lead you that's going to be perfect. All of them are flawed. But God will even use those things to lead you, to develop you, to help you, to show up on your behalf. So in reality, God is is doing something in this generation. Amen. And he's doing so to lead us to new levels. Watch this. So when God begins to desire to bring a person into revelation, the type of revelation that can establish them as a voice in their city, in their community, in their family, he begins to discern whether or not they can handle and steward the mysteries that he wants to give them. Many times the way God tests what you can handle is through the person he gives to pour into you. If you won't even listen to them, why would you listen to God? If you won't listen to the person you can see, why would you listen to God? And what happens is many times when we get offended, watch this, we will begin to fashion God in our image. So God says things that agree with our perceptions. God says things that agree with our perspectives. And that's not God. I can't tell you how many times God has confronted me in my prayer closet about my heart, my heart posture. Towards people. So this is what he does. When he, then he, once he, he, he begins to see that we can steward mysteries, he brings us into a greater level of discipleship. He will disciple us by a person and by the Holy Ghost simultaneously. Now watch this. Just because the, whole, the Spirit of God is speaking to you doesn't mean you negate the voice of the, of the person God has sent into your life. I didn't even have this in my notes. I'm telling you this by the spirit of God. There are things that God wants to bring us into. And what you have now, listen to me, is not what you need for the days ahead. There are things we can't even teach on Facebook. (laughs) But God wants to bring us into the more. And when God begins to give you revelation of things, you'll begin to see things. Differently. When God began teaching me about the fivefold, I didn't always understand why this leader did things differently and that leader did things differently and why this person did it this way and I wouldn't do it that way. Then I began to understand functions of the fivefold and they function differently. That's why the disciples, uh, the apostles said, listen, um, we need some pastors and deacons to oversee the people so we can stay in the word and and the ministry of the word and prayer. Because we have different functions and we need people who care enough to shepherd and love and make sure everyone's okay and make sure needs are met. And at the same time, we can't negate the realms of God that we need pouring into the earth. There are some of you, I've seen people get get, uh, frustrated with people not evangelizing. And you know what? They're evangelists. They have a greater burden for souls. All of us should have a burden for souls, but they have a greater measure. And when you begin to discern by revelation, you're not frustrated because you understand God gifted this to them. It's a gift to move them into greater realms of effectiveness and and to use them to equip the body to do the same. And so I'm telling you, God, his desire is to lift us out of carnality. Carnality, I'll say this and I'm going to close. Carnality is not just sinfulness. It is our departure from the mind of God. When man fell, then he became carnal. He fell from the realms of God. He fell from the revelation of God. He became carnal. In other words, his mind, his will, his senses were all designed now to only function from this world. So if it makes sense in this world, then that's the way I live. No, I'm not giving tithes and offerings. That doesn't make sense in this world. But you don't understand it unlocks a mystery in the spirit realm. It unlocks a mystery in the realm of superiority. Ah, I wish, man, I wish I could go into the the, the glory. I don't have time tonight. God, uh, God, God interrupted my prayer time the other day and I went into class like I've never, never seen before. It blew my mind. 
there are things that are already ready to be pulled into this world. And God is waiting on a people whose mind has fully agreed with him to become a portal from that world into this one. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your people. I thank you for this word. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would cut away the callous on our hearts. Any area that has become hardened by sin, by offense, by bitterness, by habitual sin, Father, by, by resentment, Father, anything that would callous our heart, that would condition us not to receive revelation, not to be able to see, not to be able to hear and understand. I pray that you would cut it away. Do surgery tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would open our eyes to see like never before that realms of revelation, that realms of sight would return to us again. Father, I pray for those whose dream life has been stifled and they don't understand why, but it is blindness that has crept into their life. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that that blindness will come off of them, that veil, that evil veil will be rent tonight by the power of the living God. Let your fire begin to fall upon your people tonight in Jesus' name, that realms of revelation, that realms of encounter, that realms of understanding will begin to encounter your people. Yes, Lord, I pray for the spirit of wisdom. I pray for the spirit of understanding. I pray for the spirit of knowledge. I pray for the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I pray for the spirit of might. Rest on us. In the mighty name of Jesus, that we would understand and demonstrate your world, your ways, your mind. That we would be those who have command of the mysteries of God. That we would be those who have command of realms of God. I heard a testimony today, Father of a man who literally refused to allow a, a witch convention in his region. God, I thank you for raising up a generation again who so has command of the spirit realm and the realms of God that we would govern regions by the authority of your kingdom. Father, raise up those who fully agree with you in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you Tonight, that your spirit would rest on us, that your spirit would fill us, that every place inside of us that is darkness, I pray that you begin to shine light, that you would give us a spirit of repentance for every place where we've clung to darkness. Jesus said that the, 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 the enemy came searching, looking for me, seeing if he could find anything inside of me, and he found none. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that there would be no dark corners on the inside of us. There will be no dark rooms on the inside of us. There will be a house wholly flooded with light in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. I thank you for those hearts that are repentant right now. I, I sense it by the Spirit of God. I pray that you would move now. <laughs> I thank you that you would move now upon those hearts. Touch supernaturally. Bring freedom tonight. Let that heaviness lift, that spirit of confusion that came through darkness. I command it to lift off of their minds now in the name of Jesus. Bondages and wraps over their mind. I command them to loose them now in the name of Jesus. Break and let them, be, let them go in Jesus' name. And I thank you and I praise you tonight for your power resting on these, your people. That you're raising a generation of leaders who will carry realms of glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, if you did not catch um, the, look at my friend Paya, good to see you. Um, if you did not catch uh, the, the previous teachings in this Issachar series, I, I encourage you, go listen to them. If you don't know where they are, you can, they can be found um, on our Facebook or our YouTube. Uh, they're not on Instagram, but you can find them on Facebook and YouTube at Life Altered. Um, and uh, they're all streamed there. I I'm telling you, God is raising up a people. And this is the hour where the sons of God are being revealed. This is the hour where you're going to begin to see people come out of nowhere. And it's not because they're not known in heaven. 
you didn't know who they were, but God is raising up a people who agree with him. So if you have not gotten these, again, go back and, and find those. Or listen, follow us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram. Uh, I mentioned earlier, we have a community on Facebook, uh, the Life Altered community. Uh, it, I'm going to start doing more pop-up lives in there. If you weren't on in the beginning, I did make uh, two announcements I want to make again really quickly here. The first announcement is, uh, excuse me, the first announcement um, is this one. My wife will be joining us um, next week. Come on. My wife will be joining us next week, and she is going to be, um, I'm sorry, not next week. Next week is Thursday, um, uh, Thanksgiving. Not next week. She'll be joining us the week after. Um, she's going to be uh, sharing her testimony. It's going to be powerful. Sorry, I'm trying to get this flyer back up here. And the devil is a liar. Um Thank you, Lord. Uh, she's going to be joining us next week. It's going to be powerful. I'm telling you, my wife is a powerhouse. She is quiet. She has like sitting in the background, but we're at a place now where the Lord is refusing to let her stay back there. So I'm so excited. This is going to be on uh, December the 5th. So do not miss this same time, uh, 8.15 p.m. Uh, it's going to be our freedom night. If you are uh, someone who has dealt with depression, uh, heaviness, oppression, uh, any of this, I'm telling you, get here, get, invite somebody. It's going to be powerful. She has a tremendous testimony. Um, and God is doing supernatural things with her already. We've seen so much, even in the last year, um, that my wife is not public about. She doesn't go around testifying about, but I'm telling you when this woman prays, something happens. Um, so I encourage you guys to, to, uh, be here. Um, uh, again, we won't be here next, next week on Thursday. We'll be here the week after, um, and one other thing. So going forward, we're going to be moving to every other week. Uh, there's a couple of mandates the Lord has given me, two of which are, are writing, uh, finishing these two books. Um, so we'll be going biweekly. Um, I will be doing more pop-up lives in the community. So if you want more content, um, join the community. We'll be, I'll do more teaching there. I'll also have some friends that are coming in there and pouring into us. Um, so do that. But I'm telling you, um, it's, it's going to be powerful because there are things that God has us to release um, and we've got to get it done. I, I really feel strongly I got to get this first book finished this year. Um, and so I, I need to obey God. Amen. Um, trying to see if there's anything else I forgot. Yes, my wife said, have your way, God. It is going to be powerful. I'm so excited about her uh, joining the broadcast and, um, and pouring out what God has for you. Come hungry. I'm telling you. Um, th let, let me say this really quickly. You know, there's so many of us in the body of Christ, I say us because I'm, I'm one of them who in the past has struggled with depression. And it is not just medical. Um, there are medical realities, but it's not just medical. Oftentimes it's a spiritual. And so we're going to dive into that next week. It's going to be powerful. Amen. So listen, again, if you have not followed us, join us um, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. We love you guys. Until next time, shine.